hello <laughs> and yes welcome um i normally sort of go what's on my mind right there's a lot on my mind i'll have you know that and they kind of always is but here's my man baddest baddest how are you doing i'm good i'm good a little bit cool but all good preparation they say right <laughs> like you gotta get your jumper on or whatever um you're in my country baddest i've been to yours and i love your country He's visiting for the first time, never been to Zimbabwe. I didn't know this, actually. You expect that everyone's kind of played everywhere. And so, you know, when we're at this stage of our lives, you expect you've been to all the countries. But I'd like impressions from you of, you know, um, the place in, in general, I guess. I'm wondering if you're trying to influence my decision by saying that you've visited my country and that you love my country. That was the first thing you nah, said. Nah, that's just... You know what? When I when honest. when I think about you and your country and love, man, that's all. That's it's just what's coming out, right? So don't be influenced. Be you. Yeah. So um. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much impressed with, by what I've seen in terms of the passion for the sport. First of all, the crowds that have come in, particularly when Zimbabwe play at the Harare Sports Club, the atmosphere. It's really energetic, um, electric, and that has caught my attention just the way that people feel about cricket in particular here and the love and the following and the passion for it like i mentioned i didn't expect it to be this cool mm -hmm. on mornings it's frigid and at nights um i may not have been uh, properly prepared for the coolness let's put it that way in terms of my wardrobe but um yeah it's it's surprising from that front but um, yeah, the natural beauty of the place, I've been jogging around a couple of times with you. With somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, and, and, and just the friendliness of the people as you see them going about their daily lives and the way they greet you in the streets. I think that is something that also has caught my attention. Okay. Uh, on the unpreparedness, uh, I'd say that it, it's a case very much of not listening to me when I speak. <laughs> I do remember that you asked advice and I said, morning, very cold. Evening, very cold. Pack a jumper, it'll be cold in the shade, um, even during the day. So anyway, <laughs> let's move away from that. Let's move away from that. Um, the cricket, and perhaps I should start this off by saying, just Zimbabwean cricket in general, um, draws inspiration from the West Indies for, for obvious reasons, demographics and um, what we'd see certainly personally, what I'd see on television as a young boy and uh, many of these youngsters who are playing right now also I think would, would say, say the same sort of thing. Let's speak about West Indies cricket in general and kind of go to the disappointment of um, the game against Zimbabwe, the disappointment also of just being here in qualification as a double World Cup champion um, region. I, I am cognizant to not say nation, as some might say when they speak of the West Indies. It's been a steady decline for quite a long time now, the way we've gone about it and, and not being able to turn that proverbial corner. Mm. and. As you mentioned, we're in this qualifiers, not for the first time. Yeah. We were here in 2018 trying to qualify for that 2019 World Cup in England. Mm. We were in Australia not too long ago yeah. trying to qualify for the T20 World Cup, a tournament that we won two times in the not too uh, distant past. So to find ourselves in this position again is very, very disappointing. Uh, we went through the World Cup Super League uh, Championship and we weren't able to get direct entry into the World Cup. And when you look at the systems and the structures that are in place currently and the lack of production of international quality cricketers on a consistent basis, and it's not because of talent. We've heard that uh, from time immemorial. Mm. We always compete with everyone in the world stage on a talent for talent basis. It's about nurturing that talent. And I don't think that we've done a particularly good job trying to get our players of international standard and there's a lots of reasons for that and lots of things that can be done to get 
us back there but it's not all doom and gloom mm. as i mentioned when you look at the quality of the team there's so much potential darren sammy coming into this uh management group and what he brings to the table in terms of his inspiration and his man management skills and a lot of our players are they are demanded all over the world they're in high demand in franchise cricket and you see them perform in those global franchise leagues and you just wonder how can they not transfer that or translate that at the international game so it's not about talent mm. it's about something else and we need to find the right formula to get these guys bringing out their best whenever they represent the team and as i mentioned it's not all doom and gloom we have so much to offer but it's just about getting the systems in place and getting everything in place to get the best out of everyone yeah okay so i i like that that view is very much what i would call an expert view um, it, it's a view from almost within the system um, and even if it is not kind of inside the system it's kind of close to the system what about the view and reaction of those who are at home and are essentially only supporters of, of West Indian cricket. What have you had any sort of reaction um, from the incidents, or I say incidents, from the defeat by Zimbabwe? And yes, there's an ongoing qualification, and qualify you still must, you know, as the tournament goes along. Got to make sure that you're one of the top two. So, it, what has that been like? And what have people said? What are they saying currently? Yeah, there has been. A general discontent for a long long time but talking about that defeat yesterday and, and speaking to people back home it's uh it's really disappointing and, and you hear it in their voices it's I don't know if people understand the impact of West Indies cricket in our islands it's the only thing that really unifies us and brings us together and despite what people may think there's quite a lot of support for these guys in the region and of course around the world as well so whenever you suffer a defeat like that and the manner in which we were, were, were beaten it's always heartbreaking and yet i spoke to a lot of people back home there's a lot of disappointment it's not over yet we all mm. know that the players know that i've spoken to some of the players as well for me i spoke to aki hussein i spoke to nicholas puran i spoke to ravman powell at the end of that game yesterday and they're heartbroken they're crestfallen they know how important that game was and in spite of the performance and in spite of how things panned out, it's really hurting them. So to answer your question directly, there's a lot of hurt, a lot of pain back home, and these guys know what they must do in order to get to that World Cup. Mm. And as you said, they must qualify. It's no, there's no beating around the bush. It's only two teams. It's a tough tournament, and they know exactly what they need to do, and hopefully, fingers crossed, they can get there. It's not going to be easy. No, it, it's not. And, and I remark that for Zimbabwe, it, it makes it easier than it was at the beginning of the tournament, but it by no means says that Zimbabwe will qualify as well. There are three matches to play in that Super 6 stage that are of critical importance. But the euphoria, you speak of fans. Man, as, as a person who played on that ground, right? Um, I have never ever witnessed Harare Sports Club like that. Many people speak of 2018 and say it was the same. I, I beg to differ. I was here. I was watching. It was brilliant. And even Carlos Brathwaite spoke of the intimidation of the crowd in terms of size and numbers and chanting and, and the kind of unison and, and chorus and support for your opposition as as it was the case with Carlos on the field but it was even bigger and better this time around to the point where people well had to be kind of locked in I say locked in that's in effect kind of locking others out who are still coming into the ground to try and and watch this game this is without the knowledge that there's gonna be a win this is before we know what's going to happen. And so they're just coming in because they want to watch Zimbabwe against the West Indies. They filled up the rugby field and watched 
on a big screen couldn't go 50 to 100 meters that way to the actual field because there was no room at the inn. Oh, that's incredible for me. I was at the Takashinga mm -hmm. covering the other game. That game got finished early. So we hustled across to the Harari Sports Club because we were looking at the stream and we saw what was happening and we wanted to be part of it. Mm -hmm. So all of us rushed across there. And even with our accreditation, it was quite an effort to get in. Like you mentioned, the gates were locked and they weren't allowing anyone in. So we had to call people in high places to get in. <laughs> he knows people in high places. That's what he's saying right there. Eventually, we got in and we just went to that, that, that spot next to the commentary booth. And I tell you, it was absolutely rocking. Every time there was an appeal, because we got to, I would say, the second half of the second innings, just when all of that excitement was happening. And for every delivery that beat the bat, for every LBW appeal, everyone, it was an eruption mm. every time something happened. And when that final wicket fell, man, oh man, it's something like I've never experienced before. I've seen cricket in all parts of the world for me. But that crowd yesterday, I tell you, it will want, It is one that I'll never forget. Mm. I'll say this too, that um, the well-behaved. Yeah. No invasion of the, the ground, just happiness. The play is very good, actually, at this. Uh, the Zimbabweans walk round to the fans, acknowledge that they've turned up, and kind of, yeah, well done, and thank you. It's historic, one, because it's a win against the West Indies, and that's always going to be big for obvious reasons. I spoke about... Um, you know, the inspiration drawn from the West Indies and uh, teams of the past and all the rest, and even current teams. I'm very sure that these guys get on quite well. Um, but it's a, a heavy weight of expectation, I feel, for the West Indies. And so a lot for them to do from here. For Zimbabwe, and no, no making um, predictions or anything like that, but I hope that having taken this giant step, they can take the one that clinches the place at the World Cup in India. Last time around, okay, close your ears. It's just the truth, though. <laughs> close your ears if you're of a Zimbabwean inclination. <laughs> Last time, what wasn't meant to be a hurdle turned out to be a banana peel. I hope against hopes that that's not the case this time. That is. Thanks, mate. Um, I don't know if it means that one of our teams has to not qualify for the other to go through. I hope it's not so. But good luck and thanks for chatting to everyone. Please tell them they've got to subscribe to my channel. Please, guys. This guy has a lot of knowledge, wonderful content. Please subscribe. It will be beneficial for you, self edifying. Please subscribe. I love his words. I couldn't have said it better than that. Hey, tell others what he said. Okay? <laughs> Bye for now.